Hello and welcome to Pirates. We are Pirate Adventures and uh, actually we are not really raiding anybody. Except on the pirates. And we need to be careful of... Uh, I'm not exactly sure how danger works in this game. But one well, for sure, I need to be uh, on the lookout for... Mm, okay, that's a traitor. At least a few things. Like that uh, Iron Man to the left. To the west. Yeah, we can't deal with that. At least at this point. Some fruit. Some water. And that's all. I need to sail out. Apparently... So, the crew is not gonna mutiny. At this moment. But they're getting pretty damn close to it. You're sailing past the reef when... Shield sister Dahlia shouts out, pointing to port. There lists a ship stranded in the middle, perched on a narrow shoal. It tips and rolls with the passing waves. Hanging from its mast is a blue flag showing an image of crescent moon sinking beneath the waves. Your crew gathers around, murmuring in low, excited voices. Little Luca rushes to the railing. <clears throat> Captain, that's... A gift bearer ship, no telling what sorts of treasures it's got. Rum dum briggery snorts. Gift bearers carry sentimental junk, worthless stuff. Oh, that's a smuggler ship, it's classic disguise. Jordu, rat handed, spits into the water. Then it's a fucking stupid one. Gift bearers only visit landlocked settlements. That's a trap. Hmm, I don't have a spyglass. Ready the guns, the cannoneers, need, uh, the cannoneers need practice? They already told me what they think. Well, prepare the uh, skiff. We gotta check it out. You row the skiff above the reefs. The waves tossing it. The bottom of uh, the small boat occasionally scrapping across the jagged structure below. You tie off on a snag of coral next to the wreck. The water is rough and the hole slick with brine, but you're able to find purchase between the shifting planks. Let's climb up. <clears throat> you row the skiff above the reefs. The waves tossing it, the bottom of uh, the small boat occasionally scraping across the jagged structure below. You tie off on a snag of coral next to the wreck. The water is rough and the hole is slick with brine, but you're... Okay, I already read that. Come on, game. You pull yourself up, using bent planks and barnacles for holds. You've almost reached the main deck when a wave slams against the ship. You hear a crash from somewhere below as the vessel rocks. Your legs slip out from under you and your fingers dig into the bed lumber. Your grip holds. Once the ship settles, you resume your climb and make it to, s to the safety of the deck. The ship is deserted. You don't even find corpses. If the ship had a skiff, it's missing too. Well, search for salvage. <clears throat> you find several crates of supplies and several more assorted odds and ends. Handkerchiefs, a bee jewelry, cracked scrim's shaw, a child's doll. Ah, uh, it's kind of trash. You think back to Rum Dum Briggery comments uh, and wonder if it, if this might have been smuggler's vessel, vessel after all. Search for evidence of smugglers. Streetwise and perception. Yeah, he has the streetwise. They both have it. Seraphin glances around before sliding a crate of junk aside and finding a trapdoor underneath. Within rests a small chest brimming with golden shellings. Is that good? 23? The item was put into your stash. Seraphin whistles. Smugglers after all. Among the coins rests a small figurine of an imp of all things. Okay, one per rest. Um, 
the item was put into your stash. You load your find onto the skiff and row back to your ship. Great! We gained some experience. I guess. Don't mute any guys. Uh, best captain ever, right? It doesn't say what... What really brings up the morale? Working with injury. Oh, low morale because we're drinking water. The water darkens off the starboard bow of your ship and jagged spurs and spits rise from the waves in the near distance. Raised voices carry from the helm. The Otara Marvel is near here. Every sailor must see it once. The Quick's hand are clasped together in urgent entreaty. Some of the other crew have gathered to listen, a hopeful shine in their eyes. Take us through the reef. Don't care for the thingy. The dead coral juts from the surface, grasping above uh, like the legs of a spider, and the wind whistles as it passes across the jagged structures. Below the water, schools of fish flash among the brilliant reefs. Uh-oh. <clears throat> Beldul attempts to guide the ship through the reef, but with a shudder that rattles your, rattles your bones, the vessel scrapes against the reef. A sound of tearing wood echoes across the deck, and hands scatter, descending into the hole to locate and repair any damage before it spoils the stores. Yeah. The variegated shallows give way to blue depths, and an enormous sinkhole opens around you, yawning wide enough to swallow a fleet. Beldo sighs with relief as Equik searches the horizon for any sign of the mythical marvel. Uh, the defiant sails on. Okay. These guys got... Got better. Got some experience. Hmm. Maybe you should be cautious. Actually, I didn't read the first part. Much of the stone is encrusted with coral, but the visible portions of coil above the water in long, looping spirals. Adra normally grows in large pillars, but this formation looks almost like seven tentacles of some terrible sea monster grasping uh, from the sky. When easy, this was low. So old. Had to be in evidence. Old Engram scoffs. Even they couldn't do that. That's Andra's slow, steady work. The Adra catches the sunlight, gleaming as if a glow from within. Indeed, it's hard to tell whether the Adra's strange contours have been shaped by slow wear of the sea or disturbed by it. And something about that ambiguity makes the vision all the more extraordinary. The rest of the crew chimes in, debating the wonder's meaning and origins in low of the voices. This must be the triumph of an ancient people. We are fortunate to have seen it. Now, now we've seen it, let's move on, shall we? Exactly. A quick glances at you. Uh, with knit brow and shrugs. But those sails past the Adra, maintaining a safe distance, Equik and Eldengrim move uh, to the aft castle, eyes locked on the Teotara marvel until it disappears below the horizon. Okay, crew got more experienced. What? The ring of a bell comes to you on a cold wind. 
It does? The ring comes again and again until soon the air is full with the sound of a thousand, thousand bells ringing all at once. <laughs> Sounds great. You feel a resonance in your core. A bell ringing in tune with all the others. Something in you bends, then breaks. And you are borne away on the ringing tide. Just another peal among the many. The tide of bells recedes. You lever yourself up onto your knees and realize you have been here before. You stand in Bareth's realm. God of death. You are alone. And then you are not. An indistinct figure stands before you, flickering between forms like a fire cast shadow. A fixed, taunting grin. Bottomless black eyes. A yawning chasm in the earth. The aspects of Barith, the Usher, and the Pallid Knight shift in and out of focus. And at their back, four indistinct shades hover. You feel an eternity stretch out behind each of them, reaching back to places so distant and yet so near you cannot comprehend their size. The shifting image of Barith settles on the aspect of the Pallid Knight. Watcher. She intones. Her voice is the discordant clangor of gongs struck out of time. I tasked you to discover Aethys's intentions. Tell me what you have learned. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm really on that, by the way. Is, is draining souls from veins of Luminous Adra? Yeah, we know about that. Can't say I really focused on the mission. I more like fancy myself as an explorer at this point. But yeah, we do know about that. The Luminous Adra and Eotas. The Pallid Knight knits her brows. He does not seek to return to the beyond? Intriguing. Yes. That's quite obvious at this point. Her sickly pale skin pulls tight across the bones of her face. As if the shell of this aspect does not quite fit the impossible creature it contains. The figure nearest Barith dissolves and reforms in the image of a thin-lipped ancient crone whose face has felt the melting kiss of fire. The goddess Wodica strides forward. Does Aethys frighten you, Barith? He should. Margron subdued Aethys' influence once before, and yet he returned. From out of Wodaka's shadow shuffles a hunched, bald man you recognize as the God Scan. His skin is mapped with swollen lash scars, and breath whistles through the ragged hole in his face where his nose once was. He does not speak, but stares up at Wodaka with naked loathing plain on his ruined face. Wodica steeples her long, knob-jointed fingers. We must annihilate Aethys now, before he makes a rash decision we cannot easily annul. She casts a sly look at the pallid knight from the corners of her eyes. A moon would do the job nicely. A moon? Wodica says and grins. Huh. I have to say that this uh, setting is definitely uh, a better way to get to know the gods. If you think that's the appropriate solution, I won't stand in your way. I'm pretty sure we need that. Given her relationship with the moon, I doubt Andra would approve of that plan. I'm actually a little bit foggy on this moon plan. You would destroy Eora for what, Spite? Wodica stares at you down her long nose. I would destroy it all in the blink of your wide eye if I believed it would benefit me. Empires can be rebuilt. Souls can be reforged. Do not forget it. The figure beside the aspect of Barith flows forward in a swirling cloud of ash. The ash falls to the tiles and reveals a molten-skinned woman 
leaning on a monstrous, wicked-edged broadsword. Magrin's glowing lips curl in disdain. We must find a solution to the problem of Aethys that is neither do nothing nor destroy the world. Yeah, something between those two would be great. I acted in haste during the Saints' War. You will not goad me into doing the same now. To move against him while his plans are unknown would be the height of foolishness. We must find wisdom in precaution. Magrin says. What kind of precautions do you suggest? Magrin looks at you as one might a wayward gob of spit on one's shoe. It is no business of yours what the gods decide. What? Okay. How about... Aren't you guys making it my business? Another of the silent figures steps forward. And the warm, golden light of a summer's afternoon spills across your face. Let's all take a deep, calming breath. Perhaps cooler heads will prevail. Behind Helia's words, you hear the soft coo of doves. Aethys has been separated from us for too long. Isn't it possible he intends only to gather enough souls to reclaim his realm in the beyond? He should be welcomed. Helia says. That still doesn't justify it. So, what? He goes on a big murder spree? So he can... No, this makes no sense. Like, no kind of redemption story starts with, you go on a murder spree. I can't think of anything that makes this okay. You look up then into avian eyes. Through them, you see clouds of starlings converge and divide. What if he intends to betray you? Helia puts a feathered hand to her chest. He wouldn't. Betrayal is not in his nature. Well, he was betrayed plenty of times. Maybe he uh, got wiser. Scan shuffles forward. Yes, yes. We should welcome Aethys's return to the fold. His gratitude we can leverage to cajole him into divulging his plot. Yeah, that's actually quite sneaky. More like pretend to welcome him back. Then, when he believes himself to be in our good graces, we do as Wedeka suggests and crush him into the earth. Scan is the only one with a plan. Scan pauses, inspecting you. Ah, and here is the Watcher who wiped dear desperate Alice's mind. You could have let my followers help her kill the man who tormented her. But you did not. Curious. Scan licks the ragged edge of his lipless mouth and grins, then turns to Helia. I did not expect such a deliciously ruthless idea from you, Helia. I am impressed. Helia's feathered crest stands on end. You... You wretched little creature. What? He's too dangerous, you have to destroy him? His vessel may be destroyed, little watcher. But Aethys is more than the vessel that holds him. He will always return, however we strike him down. Magrin says. Then what's the point of this exercise? The Pallid Knight gestures for silence. Aethys cannot be killed, but he may be subdued. Yet to do so will take immense power and time. She Both stand in his favor. Magrin grits her black glass teeth. That is why we must ascertain his plans before he has the chance to put them into motion. She begins to pace. Her steps leave little trails of fire in her wake. Magrin stops and balls her hands into flaming fists. Even if we manage to destroy his current form, there is the possibility he could return. 
if he has not already absorbed all of his children. Absorbed his children? I don't understand. The pallid night casts a cold, cutting glare in Magran's direction. Magran speaks too freely. That knowledge is beyond your ken, Watcher. Well... I thought this was a sharing moment. Lordica waves the gods to silence. Aethas gathers strength. His strength is a threat to us. Her voice takes on a sharp, almost panicked edge. There is no sensible answer to the question of a resurgent Aethas other than decisive final action. There's no cause to act now? Something must be done, yeah. Your opinion is unasked for and unnecessary, but noted nonetheless. The Pallid Knight says. Though her tone is impassive, the banked fury in her eyes says well enough what she thinks of your interruptions. We will act when it is appropriate to do so, and not before. The Pallid Knight steps away from the half-circle of assembled gods. She pulls herself up to a great height. The words she speaks next come not from her mouth, but from all around you. Follow him, Watcher. The black of the Pallid Knight's irises expand until her eyes are as dark and cold as the void between stars. She bends down and brings her ghostly face level with your own. Somewhat creepy. Your debt to me remains unpaid. Fair enough. I'll do what I can. She stares at you, unblinking. Like a needle drawn to a magnet, you are pulled toward her one compulsory step at a time. Helpless to resist, you tumble into her impossible eyes. You fall wildly, endlessly, unable to find your bearings or slow your spin. And in the distance, above, no, behind you, comes an insistent ringing. You angle yourself toward it, searching for the sound. A small silver bell appears just inches from your fingertips. You reach for it, straining to still its interminable ringing. The moment you touch it, your soul slams into your body with all the force of a fall from the top of the sky. You blink open your eyes and find yourself on the floor of your ship's cabin, alone. Quite the trip, eh? So the gods don't really know what to do with Aotas, and apparently he cannot be killed, perhaps can be trapped. Should I loot my own place? Seems a bit... uh... crazy. Okay. Does this lead to the deck? Actually, it seemed to not matter. I can just uh, press to world map. Then we continue sailing. Uh, finding Eotas. Whose location is currently unknown. Is he just like... I, I guess he can just keep walking in the ocean. Put a cow. Some mail. So the plan here is that we're gonna go towards the capital, talk to the queen, and uh, and get some information where we might be able to find uh, Aotas. Okay, this looks just hella dangerous. Okay, doesn't seem impossible though. I might have to do a wizard's double. All 
Aren't you attacking? Oh, his AI's turned off. That's bad. That's it. Okay, I need to go... Well, a heal is already happening. Whoa, that's... Just feels so fast. Okay, it worked out. The heal actually activated. We need to activate another heal. Sigil of Darkness. Darkness. Activate that. Heal everybody. I just spent so much time on not dying. Wait, what? I need to get closer to mind control the Sorib champion. All things must come to an end. Even me. Pretty much out of everything. So I can only auto attack. <laughs> Running away is is dangerous. <laughs> Let's withdraw. Sorry, champion is back. Can we just Kill Pura Cow. That's charm. <laughs> what is this fight? I need something stronger. I'm gonna figure. Let's do a heal on everybody. Pure cow! Time to die! Also heal on everybody. Sorry, champion is back. Is there a button to quick switch between ve weapon sets? Not like it really matters. Okay, Sarb Champion is gonna die now. Alright. Tough fight. What the hell was that? Why not? Why not? Plus two resolve. Plus one resolve. Grants lone wolf. Okay. No problem. Everybody. Did it curse us? Curse of darkness. Well, how long is it gonna stay on? Is this it? We just got cursed in the desert and... Uh, <laughs> and nothing else?
All right. I guess we're gonna bail. Not like there is anything else to do. Oh yeah, I can check that one out. Before we go. Some water. The high. Storm. Wow, it's really hard to go past this thing. Howling Gorge. It's a proper island. Karatapu Channel. Yeah, big island here. Howling Gorge. Caverns of... Sour Tuk Tuk as well. <clears throat> sure. Getting some water and checking out the Howling Gorge. The desert. Uh, wind carries a sibilant uh, sur susurrus to your ears from the canyon ahead. Punctuated by cracks and pops, it reminding you of eggs on a hot pan or a fire in dry boot, the dry brush. The low growl that accompanies it, however, raises the hair on the back of your neck. Let's just search for the presence of other minds. Obviously, cipher. Seraphim's eyes slide close and. And breathing slows, you feel the faint tingle of the cypher's abilities probing the edge of your own soul before turning outwards. I kept got twixt three and five minds ahead. One of them be right god's damn big and twice as hungry. Continue uh, cautiously forward. You carefully enter the desert canyon, keeping to the shade cast by the tall standing stones, ahead of you, a group of saw ribs chant, hopping back and forth on skinny legs, shaking their spears. Uh, nested between them rises the black, leathery form of a drake. The creature's wings rise above it as it tears at the corpse of a boar at its feet. Tears more like it. Uh, <clears throat> Continue watching. With a mighty twist of its uh, muscular neck, the drake tears the boar in half. It rises up on its legs, lifting its head and swallows the back half of the boar whole. The lump of the animal visibly travels down the reptile's throat. One of the saurics, uh, saurips hops forward. It tears its feathered headdresses, headdress from its head and tosses it aside. It drops its staff a moment later and spreads its arms before the drake. The large beast peers down at the sorib, then, with a flash of movement, eats the small wilder in a single bite. The other sorib's cheer, banging their spears against their shields. What the hell are you guys up to? Use the distraction to sneak closer? <clears throat> You move quietly from stone to stone, entering the canyon without drawing the creature's attention. Great! So... I managed to avoid the fight? But is that good for me? Well, we didn't avoid it that much. It looks like. Huh. Let's put them chill fog there. Never you mind that miss. 
Oh, we're getting overrun. Why every single time do you get overrun? Okay, she's saved for now. But that's gonna be very temporary. What is that, by the way, you're trying to do? I don't even know. She's paralyzed. Wait a second. I can't cast anything. Okay, heal is coming out soon. Maybe put down the heal over time. That could be great. Also, that could be a really good spot for a fireball. How are you doing with defenses? She does have mirrored image on her. But no wizard's double. And she only has one spells left. Bewildering spectacle. Could be a decent use. I just do a heal. And the iconic projection is gonna be... Wait, we have 70 focus? And you're not using it? Why not? Okay. So you have a level one ability you can still use. Could be minor missiles. What? Are we standing in? Wait a second. I'm out of heals. I managed to not finish them off. For so long, that I'm finally out of heals. And we are still cursed, by the way. Let's go. Sorry, champion! I don't have any more skills. Actually, I have one blind. Whack him any harder. Yeah. Come on. I cannot whack him any harder. <sighs> I need to rest. A lot is injured. Egg. What? Ale. Plus constitution, but minus dexterity. Grog. Milk increases the healing received. Um, take less damage. That seems pretty damn good. Maybe use rice. And rest. Rest, guys. Why not? Minus 10% damage taken. That's really good. Okay. So what we have here? Ah, uh, basically complete trash. Indeed. <laughs> Come on. Indeed. I possibly could have sn snuck past them. But, hey, this was fine. It just really uh, shows us that uh, we can fight in this area. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, guys. 
See you next time.